There's a gypsy down on Bleecker Street. I went to see her as a kind of joke, and she lit a candle for my love luck, and 18 bucks went up in smoke. Is there anything more beautiful than the morning light? I don't think so. Hey, can I ask you a few questions? Uh, How you doing today? Uh, Are you having a good time? Uh, uh, Are you eating like noodle salad? And there are all kinds of love in this world, but never the same love twice. Hello, little one. Good morning. everybody I am so happy to see you today thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi I so hope you had a good safe week well I ha I was you know gonna have a video for you today about my favorite makeup at the drugstore for us ladies over 60 but it all fell apart I had such an emotional week and I just wanted to share it with you today I, I learned some lessons and I think they're so important that I want to share them with you. But, well, out of the corner of my eye when I was filming this week, I saw that this video would be like my 303rd video that I've ever uploaded. And that just, well, it knocked me for a loop. Over 300 videos over six years. And, and I thought back on all the stages that I went through and everything I've learned, everything I've felt my relationship with you and, and some of the, the other ladies that do what I do. And, and then, you know, up on the hill, there, there's a new little shop. There, there's a gypsy up there, and she reads fortunes. And I decided, well, that would be fun for my channel, right? I'll just go in there and, and have her, you know, give me a reading. And then, you know, we can all kind of chuckle about it. <laughs> okay. It wasn't so funny, actually. It was a 30-minute reading, and, well, she told me a lot of wonderful, beautiful things, that my future is so bright. And for me to come back on October 1st, because I would have something wonderful to share with her, if, if I forgave someone in my life. And I thought to myself, well, <laughs> who would that be? So I asked her, who do you think I, I have to forgive? And she said, yourself. As soon as she said that, it just clicked. Whether I believe any of this or not, in that moment in time, I knew that it was true. That so much of my happiness was being taken away because I have carried this guilt and this shame over something that I did years ago in the 80s. I wanted to share with you today something that is so personal and something that has haunted me for years. And in the early 80s I had a chance to go to New York and work with a record company and go on a little mini tour and that would take me away from home for about a year. I would be able to be home uh, a little bit here and there, but mostly I would be gone. Well, I had 
an 11 year old son. And the decision I made was to go for my career. So there were visits home, of course, and telephone calls every day, letters. But it was the worst decision I ever made in my entire life. When I am having a really bad day, there are times where I will flash back on me being in an airport and I'm calling my son and he is begging me to come home. And I still hear his little voice begging me to come home. And I tell him, I will be home in a couple weeks. I love you. I miss you. Wyatt, how old are you? Three? You're four. You're going to be four? What I want to do right now is share with you four of the most important things I learned about self-forgiveness. And the first one is take responsibility. Really take responsibility for what you did or the decision that you made and own it. And don't sugarcoat it. Don't be defensive with yourself. Don't make excuses. Just own it. And don't let anybody around you sugarcoat it either. It is what it is. And we will go on from there. The second thing I had to do was apologize. I contacted my son. We sat. We talked. And I asked him if he was okay. I listened to him. I apologized to him. And I wanted to make sure that my apology included him, his feelings, his thoughts, and I wanted I wanted to validate every single thing that he felt. I did more listening than talking when I apologized. And it was so wonderful. And it was so liberating. The third thing that I had to do was I sat down and I wrote myself a three-page letter on why I want to forgive myself and why I am forgiving myself. And the main point that I came up with in my letter was that I'm not capable of premeditated malice. Even though my decision was wrong, at the time, I didn't know it. I, I didn't mean to hurt anybody. I didn't mean to hurt my son or myself or my family. I'm not capable of cruelty. When somebody hurts me, when they hurt me deeply, I'm not capable of retaliating. I, I want to, but I can't. It's just something in me. Somebody who hurts me deeply, I just, I feel they're a broken person. And that if I set out after them to hurt them, I'm just adding to their pain. Hurt people hurt people. When I actually sat down and wrote that my horrible decision was not from anything but foolishness, and carelessness and selfishness as bad as all that is it was not malice I'm not capable of that I think the last suggestion that I have for you on self-forgiveness is the most powerful and the most important and that is to to think about what has haunted you for the last year two years, 20 years, maybe your whole life. Sit down and force yourself to write two, three, four things, four positive things that came out of your no good, rotten decision. Four things. It's kind of like the uh, George Bailey, it's a wonderful life type suggestion here but four things that if you hadn't made that rotten decision, 
maybe something that's wonderful in your life right now wouldn't have happened. This changed my life. And I want to just share with you my four things that I wrote down. And the very first one is I am now, because of my no good rotten decision, I am a better mother to my son. I am available to my son every second of every day. All he has to do is pick up the phone and say, Mom, I need you and I am there. Anything I have going on in my life is going to be put on hold. Even the sale at Ulta. I will be there for him. They say, if you can't be a good example, you can be a horrible warning, right? Well, that leads me to number two. My son is a better father because of me. The pain that he went through and the abandonment issues that he went through, his children are never going to have to go through that because he knows that pain. He is a wonderful, giving father. And the most important thing between he and his children is that they know that he's going to be there no matter what. Another good thing that has come out of this situation is that after all these years, it has allowed my son and I to have this like open portal. We, we have this completely honest relationship. We're not defensive. We're not argumentative. We just talk. We just talk and we listen. I honestly don't think that that would have happened without our past. And lastly, the best thing to come out of my no good rotten decision that has haunted me for so long, it has taught me that the most precious thing we give our children, our friends, our husband, people in our life, our loved ones, the most precious thing that we give them. It's not boats or cars or money. It's our time. It's our physical presence in their life of them knowing that we're there, that we have their back, that we can be counted on. I read a quote this week that really speaks to what I'm talking about right now. And it's about legacy. And I always thought that my legacy would be oh, something maybe with a song I wrote or maybe something I accomplished, maybe a few little awards. But legacy is none of that. Our legacy is built on how many lives we touched. How many people's lives did we change? With a deed, a word, a smile? That's our legacy. That's the legacy that we pass on to our children. So, I want to declare this a no guilt shame zone. Because the last thing you have to do in forgiving yourself is to move on. My son does not want to remember me as the woman standing in the road constantly telling him I'm sorry. He wants to remember me with joy and love and peace. I'm going to make everything around me beautiful. That will be my life.
everybody. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I loved every second of it. You know I always do. And, and if you get time down below, could you share if anything I said today resonated with you? Have you ever made a decision in your life that haunted you a little bit? How did you get closure? H how did you learn how to forgive yourself? If you could share that with all of us, that would be so wonderful. Have yourself a wonderful brand new week. And when you're done with your week, come back and see me and Desi, okay? Okay, it's a deal. We'll be here. There are all kinds of love in this world, but never the same love twice. When I finally realized what that meant, it changed everything for me. All right, I don't get this. I get by with a little help from my, my sand?